Hi everyone, it's Miguel and today I'm going to share with you some chill workout So, before we get into the breakdown on all those variations you just saw, I want to just share some thoughts with you. And first, I'd like to see chills not only as tricks or beginner tricks, but as a concept. A concept that can be stretched in many different variations. And with my friend, we like to see that you could do a full performance only with chills, and people probably will not notice the difference. And so it's great. This is like a really safe uh, concept for you and you can really stretch it and include movements, but also more dynamic, and think also a little bit more about what you are doing with your drag and the space, and not focus only on the really nice feeling that the chill is. And last notice, for this um, tutorial, I'm gonna just use outward chill, but every concept I'm showing you now, you can do them inward and then read it twice to land them with both sense of protection. First set of variation, 90 degree, 180 and 360. So just uh, to explain shortly why uh, it's called 90, 180 and 360, is just if you imagine your body is alive, we're gonna move the dragon staff into an angle which actually up 90 degree or 180 and you will see later for the 360. And for this concept, it's important that you are using only this space of your hand and not the palm. It will help you to have like a way more straight line and cleaner plan. And uh, I'm gonna first show you all the time without rolling, then we go with the roll. So I don't need to repeat it uh, again and again. Some little tips to help you with that. Try to imagine now, so we are moving the dragon staff in space and not only around our body. And try to visualize in front of you, like if you want to reach, or like if you are boxing, if you want to punch something in front of you with the dragon staff. And you really try to aim for it. But also, if you see, my chest is moving with it. You try to if I will stay stuck here, the movement starts to be really uncomfortable. Try to move with it, like if we were pretty much box boxing. Other point, if you see, I try to stay below my shoulder level and not go like for the other chair on the neck, but around the shoulder. And also, my hands are vertical to trap the dragon stuff. This motion will give you way more pressure and so you can also give way more aggressivity and dynamic into your role as a dragon staff. Now that you are comfortable to do it without roll and really focus also on the swap of the hands in between under the dragon and to be at your shoulder level, how to go there Start with the outward shiver, but just go on the shoulder level, not higher. Only use this space of your hands so you know you are set up. Then you start to aim and let your body move with it. 
and really try to always reach in front of you. If you have a mirror, it can definitely help, but it should not, if you have a stable mirror, it should not give you too much trouble to that. Now, the 180 are particularly like this one because when the 90 degree is giving more dynamics and aggressivity into your play, the 180 is going to give way more amplitude and um, you're going to take way more space around you. Now, as you can see, here it's really important to move completely with your body. When I'm going to my right, my hips are facing completely that direction and my foot is moving with it. I'm going back center, going back completely the other direction. And the dragon staff is also parallel to the line of, of my body beyond. And if you want the visual and the aesthetic of that direction working, you really want to be sure to respect those two together. For the movement of the hands, it's the same as the other one. On the level of the shoulder and only on that face of the hand. The tips on this one. Uh, it's almost the opposite of the 90. When the 90 is going to give you way more speed, on this one, it's going to go slower. And when you are getting there, as you can see, it's going way slower. And it's only one bit. What I mean by one bit? Only one arm length before you switch arm, which is leading. It is still a basic chill, but it's uh, really extending your movement as much as you can. And try to go slow and respecting the lines and following with your body. And it should be okay. And time for the 360 now. So, if that was a 90, that is a 180. The 360 is a full turn. I love this one because it brings a tip, a pirouette, so a bit more like the dynamics and a bit of a density feeling into your play. And it's really not complicated. And it will also uh, help you to include that into your play. And it's something people really appreciate to do. Uh, to learn it, we're going to use the base of the 180. And when on, I'm on the side here, it can be left or right, it doesn't matter. I'm going to take my weight on one foot and turn behind me to come back in position. So this is like the breakdown, first 280, then we turn with it and come back in position. And do that both directions. I advise to go first completely in that position before starting to swing with your foot, just because it gives you way more stability. If you start to do it from the movement at the beginning, it makes it most of the time more floppy and you also lose the aesthetic of it. And also it can bring an element of surprise when you're playing. But just in your 180, sorry. <laughs> and you just bring a sassy pirouette in there. Some quick tips about uh, footwork, which is really important in general for spinning. And I had to learn that also, just to notice little details to feel a bit more comfortable with it. When you want to turn around one foot, it's good to just try and learn to put all your weight only on one foot. I will show you a little video on how you look on the ground. And also you can straight one of your legs and point your toes while you are turning, which should bring a better aesthetic of it also and kind of more swingy feeling. I'm not a dancer myself, but it really feels a bit more like uh, ballet or ballerina feeling and also more lightness in your movement. First, putting all your weight on one leg and feeling comfortable here. Then I want you to imagine a line that you're going to follow. And first step, then coming back. Like that. And then, I want you to feel more comfortable with it. You can do a full turn around it. And obviously work both legs. Now, 
time for the cage tool to be copied in this. I'm not sure if it's how it's called, but I just use that name for it. Um, so for this trick, it's still the same dynamic of a chiro. On a bit easier uh, version of it. To start the movement, it's uh, really simple. We're gonna simply put the dragon a bit further on the arm on one side and the other closer to the elbow. Let it go on the hand and just bringing the staff around the shoulder level on that side while the other is rolling. Then the next one. And the next one. At the beginning, it might be a tiny bit hectic and not super fluid. And one thing that can help for that is first is to have a good angle with your arm, not something too breaky, but something like a nice curve where the dragon can roll nicely. But also the nice tips for it is to flip with your finger the dragon to give him an extra push and rotation at the last moment. And step by step you're going to be able to make it fluid and less and less hectic. And having also this really nice round circle. When you are comfortable with that, we can go next step. In Dragon Staff, as long as we have two points of contact, this is why it's the most safe. But two points of contact doesn't mean necessarily your two hands. It can be one hand, one knee, or your chest in one hand. And this is what that trick is going to offer you also to explore. So now that you feel comfortable with that part, I invite you to just let the dragon roll not on, the, on your arm anymore, but on your chest. Then take it back with your hands. And you can try that both sides. And take it back. And when you start to be comfortable with letting the dragon be on your body like this, you can go even further and let it roll on your leg, both direction, and take it back. And this is a nice exploration. Then you can have a bit all around. That would be really, really nice. And you see, I'm just like if it would be my hand, I'm just kicking it back up, like this, to take it back into this cage chill. Uh, in another video, I will show you and break down the one ended one. And the different variation you can have on it, but you can also try to figure out by yourself just by seeing it's the same dynamic, just one hand needs to do both work. And the last variation for this video um, that we can call movement chiro. Um, it's probably one of the simple I know, but so effective and also really, really pleasing visually and also for your own feeling. So I will show it to you first without footwork and without roll, then you can see later. So we start like we do like the 180. And here we are creating a line. Turn and move it. And again. And we can do it in the other direction. Again, for this one, I advise you to imagine that there's a line we're gonna play with. At first, we're going to do a first half circle, then another one, and we can come back to it. And you can also do the same, just on one. Uh, body movement, in the same time that doing a trick, it can be really, really confusing <laughs> and we can get lost. Uh, that's why the way I'm showing you now, like this, let's go into static version. You see, like even with a roll, I'm going into a position, then I move my body and move it again. And by doing so also, you know that you're keeping a nice plan, which is visually more pleasing, but also you are more secure in what you are doing. 
And then, when you feel more comfortable with it, there is also a more fluid variation. Will be to when you are going in the 180, you are already starting to move with it. But I'm still getting to the 180. I'm still using the same line. I just start the motion before. But I advise starting by the static, then going to the fluid later, and actually both give a different visual and different dynamic to it. With that, you get quite some variation of Chiro now. I invite you to learn them also with the inward and the outward Chiro to have full control of it, but also have fun. Put some music you really like and just try to go from every variation you know and move around with it because now you're going to gain also way more freedom of movement. And if you can play fire audio with it, you will see how powerful it is to have all this variation and play with it. It doesn't feel that I'm just doing a chill or it's really makes your repertoire already way larger. Uh, in the next small video, I will show you some of the next variation I will teach you this time on my Patreon. If you want to follow, you can also find the link below. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you.